All right, we're back. Marcy Sports Talk. We in the building. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. Thinking about start doing some morning streams. I don't know how y'all feel about that, but uh, let's talk about Jerry Garp restructuring his contract, and we'll keep the draft spotlight rolling. Um, but uh, let's talk about Jerry Goff. Apparently, he is a team player, and he turned his, I think, almost 100% of his salary into a signing bonus this year. So, let's talk about it. You know, check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon like, button. Share the video. Read from the free press. What Jerry Carpenter structures mean for the future with the Lions. For his future with the Detroit Lions. Okay, Jerry Goff should have two seasons to prove he's the quarterback. Detroit Lions can build around. The Lions straight from there. Commitment to golf on Wednesday by doing a simple contract restructure. ESPN reported the Lions converted $20 million of golf's $25,650,000 million base salary this fall into a signing bonus, which frees up $15 million in present uh, day cap space. The $20 million bonus is uh, prorated for cap purpose over the over the four years left on con golf's contract. And gives the Lions enough room to sign their draft class and handle any moves they uh, they might still want to make. That still arise during the season. Um, it would also it also would leave the Lions with a large dead money cap hit of 15 million should they want to move on from golf after this season. So I mean it's better than you know a 30 million dollar cap hit that Stafford had, but the Lions. Had the Lions left Goff's contract unchanged, they would have had no cap charge for the 2020 for 2022 if they traded him before the guaranteed 15.5 million roster bonus is due next March. So after this after this year, they could have traded him and not had no. And that's what I, I told people that I thought I read the contract the right way on Sports Track. It's only a one year deal for him because they could got rid of him after next year. The Lions traded Matthew Stafford to the Rams for golf and three picks in January. Three three draft picks in January. General Manager Brad Holmes has said acquiring golf, a 26 year old who played in the Super Bowl two years ago, was a significant selling point in the deal. Quote: I know a lot of people talk about picks, but a lot of a lot of it was Jared Holmes said at golf's introductory news press conference last week. Quote: That's the part that some that's the part that sometimes gets kind of of. Uh, I don't want to say to say loss, but it's like okay, we can third round pick and two ones, but to have Jerry Goff, and again, it's like I said earlier, his resume speaks for itself, a proven winner. So for him to compete for the starting quarterback position and winning the starting quarterback position, I definitely expect him to reclaim that status. Can you read that. Hold on, read read this this part right here. So for him to compete for the starting quarterback position and winning the starting quarterbacks, I definitely expect him to reclaim his status. So by them doing that and only living like six million in salary this year, that's like backup quarterback salary down there. So now what we're dealing with is he might not be the starter, and it might look like they might draft a quarterback because they can get rid of Jerry Goff next year. A little to that. The, the 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 roster the roster uh bonus is fifteen and a half million dollars due next March. So now it's could I mean you can still get rid of them, it sound like. But the Lions are in the early stages of a major rebuild as many as five quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, and Mac Jones could be going the top half of the of the first round. Both the Lions and and the Rams took large dead money cap hits. And their quarterback trade this offseason. Stafford still counts 19 million against the Lions cap, while Goff still counts 24.7 million against the Rams. So the Lions still have some flexibility if they decide to go in a different direction at the position. Asked about Jared Goff's uh about his restructuring the contract last week. Holmes said whatever moves he he makes are done strategically and with the eye towards the future. And quote, and that's for the best of their future, the Lions. He said, so all of that has been taken into taken into place but for the respect of the process and where where we where he's at from a contractual standpoint we'll keep those in house but we wouldn't do anything to compromise the future of our franchise before executing golf's restructure the teams 
have a unilateral power to do simple restructures in the NFL contracts. The Lions cleared near nearly $30 million in cap space and restructuring Jamie Collins' contract. Nick Williams, uh, forcing Nick Williams to take a pay cut and release in seven veter- several veterans. The Lions used the space to trade for a defensive tackle, Michael Brockers, who signed an extension uh, to lessen the cap hit. And signed their, their, their modest free agent class, including Charles Harris, Jamal Williams, Tim Boyle, and Brashad Pyramid. And uh, we didn't expect them to do much over the last course of last thing of time. But the worst case scenario with them will be, you know, talking about the worst case scenario, number seven. It wouldn't be a cornerback. It wouldn't be a quarterback. Hold on. I think the worst case at number seven would be Mac Jones. Worst case. Worst case is taking Matt Jones. Even if you take Michael Parsons, it's not worse than that. But they got flexibility. Michael Copper had them taking Devontae Smith, so really. These that seventh round pick gonna let you know what they what they thinking. If they take Justin Fields, it's a rumor people might trade up for Justin Fields. I mean, this is gonna be a slow rebuilding process. They take a receiver, that mean they believe in Jared Goff, and they're trying to Give Jared Goff every opportunity to to progress. You know, if they take Chase, any pass catcher, Kyle Pitts early on. If they got Patrick Sertin or they got um, J- Jalen Waddle, I'm not Jalen Waddle, but Quit Petty, somebody else. You know, or Zayvon Collins. I mean, you know, quarterback will let you know it's a total, it's a real rebuild. You know, and, and I'm not saying Jared Goff is incapable. You know, one thing that Jared Goff got going for him in Detroit. He got a better offensive line. If they take Rashad Slater, or they take Christian Darisaw, or let's just say they move, let's say they take a receiver first, right, or pass catcher, whoever you like. Waddle, Smith, I'm a Smith fan, Chase fan. You know, and then let's say they go to the second round, right? I'm trying to see. And they take a guy like Alex Leatherwood, who was a really good left tackle for, you know, for the um, Alabama Crimson Tide. So they got receiver, left tackle. That means they're really trying to help or right tackle. They're trying to help Jared Goff. And I think I think that's the number number one the number one more important thing is to give Jared Goff every opportunity to to do his thing if you don't go quarterback. You know, that's my thing. He said, we need defense. I mean, you can say you need defense. I'm not mad at that. You do, but it's a rebuild. You want to give Jared Goff every chance to put points on the board, but at the same time, I love Zay. I love a lot of players in this draft. But they can use their draft capital and move up and get a guy like Christian Baymore and solidify the interior lineman with Brockers, Baymore, Deshaun Hand, John Panisi, Nick Williams. They can solidify that, you know, or they can wait later to solidify that. But, you know, I think uh, Justin, Justin, Goff, Jerry Goff decides, de- deserves a fair chance. You know, and it's a chance that all the quarterbacks might be gone. But if they choose to give him a fair, I think building around Jared Goff is the number one thing. So you got six players that can go ahead of you, okay? Let's perceive that three quarterbacks go ahead of us. Let's say one, two, three, all right? Let's say four. Let's say three go ahead of us. Two, an offensive lineman, that's four. And, and let's say two receivers go ahead of us. You know, so then you left with an option. You left with Rashad Slater. You know, you could be left with, you know, Petty. You could be left with Zayvon Collins. You could be left with moving down, you know. But my whole thing is there's a lot of talent that's going to fall to the second round. You know, but I think supporting Jared Goff is what they're going to do. You know, give them some speed at receiver if they can get Smith. You know, um, get them a, maybe, you know, get them a attack, give them an attack from Alabama. I think the best case scenario, get him a pass catcher. Get him Alex Leverwood in the second round. You can use one of your first round picks in future uh, second round pick that you got. Move back up and get Collins. It's a lot that they can do. But with Jared Goff, you know, people talking about Tyreek Hill, he didn't want to restructure. But guess what? You still get your money. It's just in, in the signing bonus. You know? So, I don't, when you sign, you get all that money up front. So, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. About him restructuring, what you think about the video in the comment section? Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, inquire, response to video requests. All the social media links in the description. Fast forward, reach me is Twitter, then Facebook, then Instagram. All links in the description. Want to make a financial donation? Cash App CJ Good313. 
That's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. Best way to donate, share the video. Let me know what you think. One time for the one time. Mercy Sports Talk. Gone. Peace.